God, um, when he created human beings, gave them uh, a commission to look after the world that he'd made. Um, but to look after it um, in his image, we were created in his image to look after the world as he did. And uh, God provided for all of creation. God invited creation to, into existence, let there be this, let there be that, as an invitation to exist. And then gave human beings the um, responsibility of looking after them. And uh, really creation care is looking after our, our earthly family. We share this home with uh, the plants and the animals. And uh, it's a great home. It's the only home we've got, despite some people madly thinking we can go and live on Mars. It's the only home we've got and um, we're responsible for it. It's also a justice issue. So I think you've covered justice in another mode, but um, caring for creation means making sure that um, human beings, all human beings, um, are able to live uh, fruitful and decent lives. And when we fail, uh, as we have done, and allowed the climate to warm, uh, we've polluted, we've uh, used up too many resources in our consumer lifestyle, particularly in the West, uh, it means that other people have suffered, uh, particularly the poor. And uh, the sea levels have risen, the soil has been salinated, there's insufficient, there's a drought. So when Jesus says to us, love your neighbour, that's part of your mission. Our neighbour is not just a person comfortably in the house next door to us, but also the ones who live in Bangladesh and who live in the Sahel and who live in the Middle East, who are struggling because of the climate change that is human induced more recently and uh, that we're responsible for. So part of our mission is to love our neighbour, which means to love those uh, who are being damaged by uh, climate change. been a number of things that have uh, influenced um, our thinking. We, we both saw uh, the film The Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore and um, through the theology and writings of uh, uh, theologian Tim Gorringe um, that has also uh, in influenced us. Um, he recommended a book called Six Degrees by Mark Linus and uh, that had quite um, a devastating effect on me because it it meant that it affected my work. Um, I was working as a careers advisor with young people and I started to think about, well, what is their future working life going to look like? What, is their, what are their lives going to um, have to experience and go through over the next 50, 60 years? And I just realized how much in uncertainty there was. Um, and that, that really hit home about what's going to happen to the, the, the young people's futures. And that's the point at which I became really active. It took, took us on a different journey. Um, we started with our lifestyle, as, as lots of people do, um, thinking, well, how, how can I make a difference? How can I recycle? How can I save energy? Um, you know, how can I experience a different kind of life that's not based on consumption and materialism? Um, but then after that, it didn't, it didn't feel quite enough. Um, so got involved much more in, in community groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we got involved in the transition movement. And what was really interesting about that was we, we suddenly found this common ground um, with those who were anxious and concerned about the environment and climate change. Um, and there was so much surprise expressed on their part that that Christians and the Bible had anything to say at all about the current dilemmas that we were facing. And so there were many opportunities to work shoulder to shoulder with, yeah. uh, with people of peace, um, opportunities to really talk about uh, how we felt about um, the earth. Um, we also got ourselves an electric car. Um, we got a lot more political um, about fracking and things like that, far more than we ever had before. So it has been quite a journey, um, exciting at times, but also um, I think we felt that this was where a lot of the prophetic voices were speaking to us from. Um, being um, in leadership of a church, we were able to um, lead the congregation through a process that Arosha, the charity Arosha, designed, which then was called Eco Congregation, it's now called Eco Church. And it took four years, 
So that was a long time, but it was a quite an interesting four years of actually teaching the church about what the Bible says about creation, and it's a lot. <coughs> and then um, working out how we as a church could become more efficient and more green, and also how it could touch on our worship and our mission. And um, there was a very exciting process to be to experiment, basically, and do stuff. We got involved with the community. We organised... Um, sort of forums with other agencies on things like fuel poverty and how to um, switch supplier and uh, installation and save energy. We did fun things like um, apple pressing, you know, to create our own fruit juice and... Um, and cider. And si cider. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, jam making and chutney and uh, did that in collaboration with the Transition Gloucester movement. Uh, so lots of fun things, um, and it just gave people an, an enjoyment of some of the more simple things of life that they could uh, create their own uh, their own things. We also got involved with the local primary school, and this was great fun. Um, they showed a lot of trust. Actually, a few volunteers from the church um, were involved in a community allotment, which the school had opened up. Um, they allowed us to do a permaculture design of uh, their garden area and uh, allowed us to work with small groups of children um, from the forest school and um, we were able to um, grow things with them, um, talk about local diversity, do composting. We had such fun. Uh, we did a lot of, uh, we planted an orchard, um, lots of collaborative things, uh, good things that, that came, came out of that. So that's really exciting. In 2015, the um, climate change conference held in Paris, the COP21, um, was, a, was a big event for us. Earlier in the year, we had heard that there was going to be a group of Christians from all denominations walking from London to Paris the two weeks before the conference was due to start um, as, a, as a kind of prophetic walk um, to lobby mm. uh, the politicians to get their act together and really do something significant to change the path um, that the world was on. And uh, although we didn't know anybody else that was going on it and we weren't sure that we were fit enough to walk 200 miles, mm -hmm. um, we decided that this was something that we wanted to be involved in uh, as Baptists and as Christians. And uh, it was a really exciting time. There was about 30 of us mm -hmm that uh, set out from um, St Martin in the Fields and walked through London down to, through to the uh, south coast um, and then over to uh, France. Um, and of course it was, it was a very painful time because if you remember on November the 13th, the day we left um, was the time of the, the, the Paris terrorist attacks and there was a, a, a lot of doubt as to whether we could actually do the walk um, it was very humbling for us because we stayed on church floors, we stayed in people's homes on both sides of the channel. And uh, everywhere we went, uh, we re really felt God's mm. presence, uh, that it was a prophetic thing we were doing and part of that. And the group has stayed in touch since. Um, we're all on our own journeys in trying to make a difference where we are. Mm. And that had a big impact on us. We. We blogged through all of that, so we took our churches with us um, and as they prayed for us and prayed that we would get to Paris and be able to hand over our baton. We took a baton with us and petitions, and petitions um, asking the politicians to um, really focus mm. on behalf of the world. And they did. And they did. I think we would encourage people if they're thinking about creation care, first of all, to uh, enjoy nature more, uh, to get out there and to just appreciate it, because we care about things that we have contact with. So rather than just, you know, seeing the news about, the, you know, species dying out or rainforest being cut down, which seems so alien, <coughs> if we can go out and actually experience nature, go into the woods, uh, out into the wild as far as we can, that's a good place to start and to really appreciate what a beautiful world this is. And particularly for children, if we can actually encourage our children to experience a bit of wildness 
rather than just taking them to shopping centres when we've got free time, is to take them like our parents and grandparents used to do, out for walks and, uh, and just see how it expands their imagination and uh, it just blows their mind. So that's our first thing we would say. Um, secondly is um, to work on lifestyle. You know, it is a little bit of a sacrifice, um, but it, you, you benefit. Some of these things start off as a sacrifice, but then you think, well, actually, I quite enjoy uh, walking uh, more than getting in the car to go a short journey. I quite enjoy uh, eating less meat. I can experiment with more uh, vegetarian food, etc. So there's lots of good things we can do there in terms of lifestyle and energy saving. Um, we would encourage people to join uh, with groups. It is quite hard on your own. So if you can be, if the church, if you can take the church through um, with you or um, a transition group or just a group of sympathetic people that have the, um, the same ideals, then that's really helpful. Lobby politicians, that's really important. Uh, there's an election coming up, um, depending on when you view this video. But uh, if you can lobby politicians and just Unfortunately, the environment and green issues has just dropped off the agenda because of Brexit and uh, it just doesn't seem to be mentioned. It wasn't mentioned in the last election. It's a heartbreak, really. And it is the most important issue facing us. So, um, so do lobby politicians, remind them of how important it is. And finally, just go back to your Bibles, I would suggest, and just start reading it with green spectacles on and see just how much is in there. The Bible was written to people who were living in an agrarian um, economy, so much more closer to the land. Um, their whole lives were governed around the festivals of agriculture. And uh, if we can just get back to that simplicity of life and, uh, and let the Bible speak to us about how God loves his creation, I think that would be uh, a great way forward. Mm -hmm.